fire, fire. This week on the Pete the Planner Show, we talk to Greg. You know, looking over his stuff he sent us, he's got some really thing, uh, good things going on. He's got a pension. He's got going to be a millionaire before he knows it, which I'm about to break that news to him, and so much more. Let's hear from him now. Hello, Greg. Hey, Pete. How are you? Good. You're in law enforcement, I understand. Is this correct? That's right. And you cannot tell. You told me you cannot tell me what agency. That's right. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, and you, you, you uh, do you have a mustache? Can you tell us that? <laughs> I can, and uh, I, I don't. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, this is disappointing already. Um, Greg, tell us what's going on in your life. You, you got some interesting things. You've got a normal business, and then you got a side business, and then you got a pension. You got all sorts of things going on. Lay out your financial life for us. All right. Yeah. So uh, my wife and I, we are. 31 years old. Okay. Um, we have a small child. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm in law enforcement and, you know, I've been doing that for about 10 years now. And when my wife and I first got married, we were a dual-income family. And uh, unfortunately, she had some health issues pop up and she had to, uh, to stay at home, which has worked out. She's uh, stayed at home with her son. But we went from two incomes to, to one. And, and so uh, we kind of had to tighten down a little bit. But Fortunately, while we had two incomes, I think we, we made the best of it. We, we stayed out of debt uh, for the most part and, and uh, put ourselves in a position where now uh, I'm still still got my job. And we don't have any, no car debt, no student loan debt, no credit card or anything like that. And um, my wife and I started a, a, a side business that originally we were just wanting to, you know, it'd be great if we could make an extra 200 bucks a month or something like that. And it's really... Over the past year, taking off, um, and you know we're making more money now than we probably uh, ever thought we would at this age, and so which is not astronomical, but it's just more than we anticipated. So, not having much debt and our house payments pretty reasonable, we're starting to you know accumulate some cash and trying to figure out how to allocate that towards some of these missing goals that 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 we have, like uh, you know having a bigger home and so and things like that. So, and, uh, is that side gig? Is it law enforcement related as well? Like, hey, I know a lot of people moonlight and do security and stuff. Are you doing that, or what are you doing? Yeah, no, I, I do do that as well. So, like, I, you know, I work different security type jobs, and, and uh, you know, I, I could, really you can make as much as you want depending on how often you work. But I think last year I made an extra five or six thousand um, dollars. But you know, I could have made you know, probably closer to 10 if I really hustle, but, um, you know, so th those opportunities are available for me. Do you ever do private bodyguarding for Z-list celebrities? Anything like that? <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. I was... You probably wouldn't want me anyway. I'm a real, real... Uh, yeah, so, you know, well, look, kind of bold. I was on a plane the other day, a lady's walking down the aisle to her seat in coach, and <laughs> uh, she looks at me and she goes, uh, oh, my husband enjoys your column. And the way she said it, it was really aggressive because it was like, well, she didn't, but her husband did. And I thought, if yeah. I had security <laughs> with me right now, I'd have her hemmed up. You know what I'm saying, Greg? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay, so there's a lot of good stuff going on. Is there any chance the second business either takes completely over for your main gig or is eliminated by some mystical force? I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's... It's a, it's a very specific type of business, and, and, and I, the type of business, business it is, it's, it's kind of, you know, I don't really want to mention it just because sure. they, uh, the other people who do the same thing, they, they don't like to talk numbers. And it's not like multi-level marketing, not, you know, not knocking anybody that does that, but, you know, it's, it's not a, like an MLM type thing or anything like that. But uh, I don't foresee it taking over. Well, I, I take that back. I foresee it where we can end up making more money a year with this than I am in law enforcement, but I, I don't, you know, me leaving my career, I think that I'll, you know, probably, you know, work, you know, do this for another 20 or 25 years or so. Um, so I can assume, you know, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I can assume what you're doing is you're taking evidence out of the evidence room and then selling it. And that's the side business, right? <laughs> is that what we're talking no. about? No. <laughs> Uh, I can't. Yeah. I can't do that. Uh, so you do have a pension, though, since you're in law enforcement, which really makes things really. 
Interesting. Most people don't have a pension anymore. And, and so you're 31. At what age will you be able to fully retire from, from your service? 55? Is that, is that right? Yeah, you know, the 55 is kind of the, the, the standard age. You know, if you accumulate a lot of extra annual leave uh, over your career, you can actually use that towards your retirement. So I would say that 53 to 57 range is kind of what I would be looking at as far as retirement. And the way you know, retirement is at work, it's kind of like a hybrid plan. So if you work 30 years, just say, you get 1% a year uh, of your highest, I think, three years averaged out. So you know, you get 30% of your highest three as a pension. And then we have a 401k where if you put in 5%, uh, my my agency will match up to 3% Okay. Uh, for a total of eight. So it's kind of like a, you get a small match on your 401k and then you get, you know, kind of a smaller type pension. So, Nicole, let's pull up his numbers. I want to work through them here a little bit. Um, you have got... Uh, 125000 set away for the long term. You're putting $927 a month, and, and some of that's Roth from what I understand. You have $57,000 in your savings account, which we'll get back to in a second. Let's take a look at debt levels. Um, you have none, and you have a monthly mortgage, a 20-year mortgage, paying $800 a month. So tell me, Greg, how long do you think you'll stay in that house? You know, see, that's kind of what my wife and I, we're, we're trying to work through that. I mean, we're pretty comfortable, you know, right now, but it would be nice to, to have a bigger home or, or maybe, you know, buy some land uh, uh, where we're at. And I say land, you know, I don't know, five or ten acres and, and build, yeah. a, build, a, build a house. Um, so we're trying to decide, you know, the real estate market here, uh, you know, it's not like one of your major cities, but it's, it's starting to heat up a little bit. And there's really, you know, some of the houses to upgrade. I really, it's just not worth the money right now for me. Uh, not that, you know, it, it may stay that way. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's necessarily going to correct here, but I don't know. Just, I'm really content where I'm at unless, you know, the right, you know, just the right house came up. So just kind of toying with the idea of where we want to move and trying to decide on how much we would want to spend on a future home. Do you think your, your next so, move will be your final move, that sort of forever home term that people use that annoys me? Do you think that you think that'll be your final move or not? Um, I would probably go into it, you know, with that assumption, but, you know, I wouldn't want to say it's set in stone. Yeah. You know, uh, so, well, I, I would want to... I would want to go into it knowing I was going to be there for a while. Though. Well, your long term's looking good. Uh, we calculated your million dollar day as as we pull it up here, July third. So the day before the fourth of July, because that's how numbers work. Twenty thirty six. So July third, twenty thirty six, you will be a millionaire at your exact current pace of investing in savings. And at age 67, if you were to grind all the way through 50 and, and keep working at, and, and depositing at $973 a month, you would have $4.5 million at retirement and $10,575 a month of income. But after inflation, Greg, that would really feel about like $4,300 a month. But you know what? Your situation is one of those that I look at it and all I see is flexibility. I think you've got a million options. Like... You got the the, the world by the uh, <clears throat> belt right now, <laughs> and, and and that's a good thing. And that's why, like, this choice of uh, should we move and should we get in more house, I think that you could, but I think that will uh, could limit your flexibility. And I'm not so sure the real estate market's not going to get punched in the teeth here in the next 18 months or so. I mean, I, I'm, not, okay. I'm not a real estate expert, and I don't know what market you're in, but something tells me with interest rates going up, with actual inflation concerns now, that jumping into a home sort of like half-assed, frankly, because I couldn't think of another term, uh, because you kind of want to, we kind of don't want to, it's probably not the greatest idea right now. Okay. All right. And that's kind of what, you know, there just wasn't, you know, I'd go online and would look, and there's houses that, you know, used to sell for, say, 80000 Now they're like 105000 110000 and it just, you know, just it's getting... Uh, definitely more expensive than, than it has in, in recent years past. So. Yeah. So, are, what are you doing with all this extra money coming in? Um, obviously, you put fifty six or fifty seven thousand dollars in savings. Are you just accumulating it right now? Like, what are you doing with all this extra money? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I, right now, we're just putting it in savings. I mean, we're we're maxing out our Roth 
and uh, my wife has one, and I have one, and then I have the 401k. Right now, I'm putting in 15% of my income into that, and then, you know, I've got the pension going. And so, other than that, we're just kind of sticking money in a, in a savings account, um, I'm trying to decide on what to kind of what to do with it. Uh, I never really anticipated having the cash on hand that I that <laughs> we do now. Um, but I've almost got so much flexibility, not really sure where, where to go with it. You know, I've got an actually an option with work where they uh, this past year we can change our four hundred one k contributions to either traditional or Roth, and then we also can do a four fifty seven traditional or Roth. So I thought, well, maybe I should put some more money in like a four fifty seven plan. Maybe set a brokerage account, or you know, I've actually toyed the idea of getting a rental house, and so I've been thinking about just saving up and, and doing that. But then again, you go back to the real estate market being kind of hot right now, so I may just you know, sit on that for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, real estate eventually could be a really interesting way to diversify for you. If you look at your, if you look at the short, mid, and long term of your financial life, your long term is pretty solid, right? You got a pension, you have millions of dollars at your current pace. Your short term, dude, it's fine. You got. 50 some thousand, which actually then bleeds into your midterm. I, I would say if anything isn't amazing, it's the midterm. It's the next 14 years. Um, so if I were you, and I, I rarely like to do the if I were you thing, but I like to think I'm in sort of financial law enforcement, which is not true. But I like to think that. Um, if I were you, my extra money coming in, I would aggressively put it in brokerage accounts, non-qualified, meaning non-tax sensitive brokerage accounts, because that will give you even more flexibility because you don't have to wait till you're 59 and a half to take the money out. So if I'm you, I'm looking at robo advisors or like really inexpensive ETFs through like Vanguard or T. Rowe Price or something like that. Um, in fact, that's exactly what I'm doing. Like what I've just said is since we've maxed out everything else like you, um, I, I would, well, actually you have not maxed out your 401k, but I don't think you should based on other things you have going on. I'd rather you aggressively hit that midterm. Okay. I gotcha. So just, you know, and actually, you know, the Vanguard, so, uh, just open, you know, you would recommend either that or like a better man or, uh, you know, one of the robo advisors. Yeah. I like better man. I like better man. Okay. I like Vanguard, I like T row. Any of those are fine. Okay. Um, okay. I, I would say, though, here's here's the thing that scares me about your situation, or the two things. Number okay. one, you're in law enforcement, and you don't have a mustache, and I don't think that's trustworthy. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> do you at least wear chaps? Like, do you wear, like, motorcycle chaps or anything? No, 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 oh, I don't. That's weird. That's just weird for you. I mean, even if you're not a motorcycle <laughs> officer, I think you can get a lot of respect by wearing chaps to the scene. Um, here's what concerns me. Let's say that okay. second gig goes away, the second business, right. for, for whatever mm -hmm. reason, you have to have the flexibility and the wherewithal to subtract half of your income and still be okay. And if, and if you can work towards that point by aggressively depositing into a brokerage account, essentially the uh, equivalent value of that second income, mm -hmm. then this is almost foolproof. Like that's the foolproof plan. Okay. Gotcha. And that's kind of what I didn't, you know, I didn't foresee it going away, but like, you know, you never know. And it could theoretically change. And so I wouldn't want to, you know, adjust my lifestyle to depend on that. And then something happens and, I just, you know, our, our income on the business drops and then, you know, we're, we're struggling. So, you know, right now we can live on my salary and still invest in a Roth and 401k and have a little money left over. Just, yeah. Uh, so. No, man, I, I like it. And, and you have a, a child, uh, one child, two, how many, five? What do you got? I, I got one. We got one. And you got a 529 plan a, going, right? Yes, yes. We've got about, I think, 10,500 in it last time I checked. And how old's the kid? He's five. Okay, see, that's great. That's great. And, you know, keep that going. Is your state one, do you live in a state that, that has some tax credits or tax advantages for 529? Yeah, and that's why I picked the one that I did because we get a little tax break on our contributions to that. Okay. So, and it's actually it's one of the. I mean, it's, I think the was it the Utah plan is really high. Mm -hmm. I think rate you know highly rated, but it's it's one of the better ones you know as far as rating goes. So right. good. What else? Anything else I can answer? Well, what what about the four fifty seven plan at work? Um, 
was that is that something that you would look at doing? Um, either raw or tr- or traditional contributions, or just kind of stick with the fifteen percent in the four hundred one k. Well, here's the thing, just for for those that don't know, a 457 plan is a type of non-qualified tax-advantaged deferred compensation plan uh, that government or certain non-government employees can can use. Um, The employer provides the plan, right? So, uh, Greg, your your employer is allowing you to do it, and then you defer your compensation pre-tax or after-tax if it happens to be a Roth uh, 457, so if they allow that. In, in my estimation, I think you are better served in using brokerage accounts to increase your, uh, your savings because it's just a lot more flexible. Um, okay. And sometimes 457 plans can be pretty expensive, the fees within them, and you can get all, you know one-tenth of the cost uh, by going with uh, large ETF shops or with Betterment. Okay. All right, I got you. And, and the other thing, we've actually we've got some property that we're we're about to well we're trying to sell, and then um, about to receive a small inheritance. Oh, so then, yeah, and, and so um, the land. I mean, it's it's kind of in a rural area, and I mean, it's just going to take some time to sell. I mean, I think it will eventually, and it's, it's probably worth around twenty thousand, sure. and then we'll probably get an inheritance around. Uh, Fifteen or so. Uh, the state is pretty much getting close to wrapping up and to, to pay out the beneficiary. So um, that's going to add some more cash. And then, you know, would you consider? You know, I thought about at some point paying my home off. If because I'm projecting with the if the land sales and the inheritance and then the way the business is trending for this year, I think that we'll end up having probably about 120 to 130 in cash. And so. I, you know, I've thought about even paying off my mortgage in the next year or two just because I don't owe very much on it. But I don't know. You know, I know that's not necessarily the always the best thing to do, um, but wanted to see what you thought about that. Yeah, from a long-term perspective and using, you know, sort of the rules of math, I, I think it makes more sense to invest than to pay off cheap debt because your, your debt is super cheap. Nicole, pull up the mortgage sheet there, if you will, for a second. You got a 20-year mortgage at, uh, I believe it was 3 point something, something. There, 3.25. Yeah. Dude, that's super cheap. Like, yeah. uh, I would rather you invest and get 8% on your money than to pay the debt on, on 3.25%. But look, it's not the end of the world if you pay off your mortgage. It's great. That, but then it's on you to take that $800 a month, uh, which is your mortgage payment now, and then saving or invest that going forward so it can make sense. But I don't know. It's six one half dozen the other, but if it were me, I would not aggressively pay off my mortgage. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Now, in, in, if we were to upgrade our home in the next, I don't know, two to four years or so, depending on on when we decide to do that, is there a and you know a rough estimate that you would think we would be okay to stay in as far as a, a payment goes and be able to still you know set ourselves up for a good retirement? And, yeah. What's your possible? What's your take home from your main job? Like, what's your take home pay? Well, right now it's a little over three thousand a month. But that's after my fifteen percent four hundred one k and health insurance and all that. I say that it's like, you know, sixteen hundred one check, and then it's every two weeks, and the next one's like fifteen hundred. But I'm about to get a about a ten thousand dollar raise in oh. January, and then you know then I can have work these side gigs where if I you know work a twelve hour shift, I'll make about four hundred dollars or something like that with the security stuff. So. But that's just really whenever I, you know, whenever I want to work. I mean, based on um, those numbers, roughly about twelve hundred dollars a month. I mean, at the, at, okay. the, at the most. But and, but I'm trying to ignore your extra gig. Like, gotcha. uh, yeah. So now, if you included your extra gig, you're talking a lot more. You're talking close to two thousand. But that would be a really bad idea. Like a really, okay. really, really bad idea. Okay. Well, which in our area, you can get a you know a nice home for twelve hundred dollars a month very easily. So, do you have a badge? You ever like you oh, yeah. walk around yeah. and you ever go to like Dairy Queen, and you're like, I'll have a Reese's Pieces Blizzard, and they're like, uh, we don't have any Reese's Pieces, and you pull out your badge, you're like, do you now? Do you ever do that? <laughs> no, see, you can't. You can't do that. You can't ask for it. I mean, you oh. know, you can't. But. You know, I do I do have to wear a badge in my belt every day. So. Oh my 
I, and I'll do it identically. <laughs> I should wear a badge. Nicole, can we get me a badge that says something? <laughs> yes, we can. Um, here's the thing. I, I, yeah, you can't brandish your badge and like, because that's like a thing, right? They're, uh, uh, right, Greg? You can't do that. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you know, you can't. Oh, you're not I, supposed to. You're I would not. brandish my badge. Yeah. <laughs> like a, it'd be having just a, my face on the badge, like like Golden Peter on the badge. You know what I mean? I was going to say that. Yeah. CE bro. Yeah. Yeah. I like those all. All right. Great. So now you're going to. Yeah. 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 Any, anything I can help you with other than trying to get you fired by getting you to brandish your badge for ice cream treats? <laughs> anything else I can help you with? No, no. I think that covers it. I just uh, really wanted to get your thoughts on, on kind of this midterm money and, and where to funnel this extra cash and, and some ideas on, on you know, these, these midterm things that come up, you know. Sure. So. Well, here are the main takeaways. So here these I will summarize for you. Number one, uh, grow a mustache. Number two, uh, <laughs> non-qualified brokerage accounts, I think, is the best way to build wealth. Number three, if you're going to buy another house, keep it to around $1,200 a month. And number four, try to live your life as though that other money doesn't exist and just use it to build assets because if it ever goes away, then it won't matter. And so that's what we'd like you to do. All right. Sounds great. All right. Well, I sure do appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure. Be safe out there. Hey, yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right. That's it for this week's Pete the Planner show. Going to get a badge. Oh my gosh. I would get a badge. I, I would show it to everybody. Look at everybody. Look at my badge. But that's why I'll never have a badge. All right, that's it for the show. I'm going to done talking. You want to be on the show, be on the show. Go to PeteThePlanner.com slash podcast. And uh, until next time, here's my badge. It's, oh, notifications. Oh, I got some text to return. Goodbye. This is where I came from. Planet Love Tribe, where we drop love bombs, funk missiles, and live in soul shelters. No help to skelter. The heat don't swelter because everybody stays cool. Left many moons ago to bring the philosophies of my ancestors to another place, God. Picked the third rock, gave me to my Earth family, and told me to create. And so I am. Pin in my hand, microphone on the stand. Over vinyl, I command and demand. Magnificence in an instance, I can make you dance, cry, or love. Fly as a dove, released from ever. The fresh is fresh, and you can call me E.T. Word to John Tesh. Let me bless this harmonic presentation. It's amazing, so amazing. I'm the reason. Uh, salutations. I bring you love, trying greetings from a far away land. I am the soul controller. Put the remote down and let me take control. You're now a part of my zone, so enjoy yourself. Love, try can restore your health. I bring you greetings. Uh, Salutations, how you doing? And is that how y'all say it? The tinkling of the keys is an homage to the little, little star. I sojourn over poetic descriptions of sound to travel to my other world. Out of this world, spaceship on my arm took me home, filled by the ink and the megabytes and the hypertext transfer protocol stronger than the Skynet and the Terminator. I push faders into warp speed, glide with ease, creating a breeze they call a black hole, event horizon, no rear view concerns. This I adjourn, I adjourn. I beats I burn, I burn, I burn. This I adjourn, I adjourn. I adjourn. I adjourn. I adjourn. Salutations, I bring you love, try and greet you. He's from a far away land. I am the soul controller. Put the remote down and let me take control. You're now a part of my zone, so enjoy yourself. Love, try can restore your health. I bring you greetings. Uh, salutations, how you doing? And is that how y'all say it?